Now, it's far from clear that the Prime Minister can get Brussels to agree to a new Brexit deal. But if he does, he's going to need MPs from the opposition benches to help get it through Parliament. MPs like Labour's Lisa Nandy, who joins us now uh, from Wigan. Thank you very much for being on the programme. So, if Boris Johnson can get a deal with the EU, which of course is a big if, could you support it? Well, I, I could support a deal. I would support a deal. The problem is at the moment that we don't have a deal. What we've got is a proposal which stands virtually no chance of being accepted by the EU, which creates two borders on the island of Ireland, which has, is completely incompatible with existing international law and which rips up the workers' rights and protections and the environmental protections that we spent several months at the start of this year negotiating with the former Prime Minister. I would vote for a deal, but this is not a deal. This is a pre-election party political broadcast from the Prime Minister and the truth is that for all of the talk about getting Brexit done we're further away from achieving a deal than we were two months ago when he became Prime Minister. So even if the EU signs off these proposals which I admit does seem quite unlikely in the minute you wouldn't vote for it anyway? Well, one of the major problems with these proposals is what it potentially does to Northern Ireland. The Prime Minister has told us that it doesn't create, there'll be no new infrastructure, but he's proposing a border away from the border, which will rely on infrastructure. He hasn't been able to explain at all how it won't. And so it puts the Good Friday Agreement at serious risk. The only way in which he could get that through is to get the EU to agree to it. Not just the EU, but actually, because he'll need an opt-out from international law, from the Common, common Transit Convention, he'll have to get countries like Norway, Switzerland, Turkey to agree to it. This was already rejected back in 2018. And the UK is a co-guarantor of the Good Friday Agreement. It's just quite simply not a responsible thing to propose. It stands virtually no chance of being accepted. I certainly wouldn't vote for something that would tear up the Good Friday Agreement. You see, some people listening to it may feel that we've been marched up this hill before. You know, Labour MPs saying that they do want a deal, that they do want to leave with a deal, they don't want a second referendum, they don't want no deal. But then when push comes to shove, they back away and they don't. Uh, follow through with this idea that they are prepared to vote for a deal. I mean, how many Labour MPs do you think are serious about trying to get Brexit over the line? Well, I, I think there are a lot of Labour MPs. There are about 40 still who have been working cross-party for the last three years trying to find a way to achieve a deal. And there are still discussions going on. There's a cross-party group, MPs for a Deal. Uh, we've had some limited conversations with senior members of Boris Johnson's government about what would be acceptable and how we might achieve that. Um, and it's time for all political parties to get serious now, really. We had um, two and a half years of negotiations within the Tory party. This was always going to be something that had to be agreed cross-party because of the divisions that exist in the country. We then had four months of negotiations with Theresa May's government, which resulted in a withdrawal agreement bill, which should have found broad cross-party support, but then the Prime Minister resigned and it never came before the House. Now, there are many of us who are currently working to see if there's a way that we can bring that bill before the House for the first time and make sure that we can agree that deal. If we're serious about preventing no deal, that is the only way to do it. But Theresa May did bring proposals to the House of Commons before. Do you regret not supporting them? Well, she brought a proposal to leave the EU three times, but with no guarantee at all about where we were going. You know, I'm sitting here in my hometown of Wigan, where we have huge numbers of food manufacturing jobs. 15,000 people work in the food manufacturing industry, many of them in small and medium companies that rely on those workers' rights, protections, level playing fields, access to the customs union and the single market. All of those things really, really matter in this town. It took us months to get that Prime Minister to understand that those things had to be guaranteed before Labour MPs could vote to leave the European Union. She did finally understand that, but this new Prime Minister seems not to understand that. And it's deeply frustrating that for all of this talk about getting Brexit done, he doesn't seem to be serious at all about trying to agree a cross-party deal and move us forwards. You mentioned a bit earlier in the interview that you've been having some conversations with members of Boris Johnson's team. What are you, who have you been talking to and what, what have you been saying? So I, I haven't personally had any conversations at so far, but there have been uh, some 
attempts to talk cross-party with senior members of the Cabinet. And I know that there are other Labour MPs who've been approached and have had some of those conversations so far. Um, the the cross-party talks, the cross-party work that is going on is much more um, between backbenchers of all parties who are currently trying to see if there's a way that we could bring the withdrawal agreement bill before the House. That was a bill that came out of the cross-party talks. It met the vast majority of Labour's key tests and it's the way, the only way, in my view, to prevent us leaving with no deal in just a few weeks' time. Do you think it's strange that members of Boris Johnson's team haven't reached out personally to you, given that you have been saying pretty consistently over the last year or so that you would be prepared to vote for a deal if you think it's the right one? Well, I think there are people in this existing government who are serious about trying to agree a deal. But I think that what we've seen from the Prime Minister over the last two months since he was um, made Prime Minister by the Tory party is much more about electioneering, much less about trying to resolve what is a national crisis. From the word go, he's alienated those MPs that he would need to rely on to get a deal. Some of the language that is used in the House of Commons, the references to my colleague Joe Cox, have really, really upset and offended many people who he would need to vote for this deal. I still believe that it's important that we do work cross-party to get those guarantees and to get that deal through. But he's not behaving like a Prime Minister who's at all serious. This is about an impending general election and Boris Johnson trying to go to the country pretending that he's trying to get Brexit done. But in reality, all he's doing is wasting time and running down the clock as we approach no deal. Just mentioning that election there, um, which most people agree is probably going to happen sooner rather than later. Um, ahead of that election, Labour are engaging in some reselections. Uh, we've seen, for example, the Labour MPs, Dame Margaret Hodge. We've seen uh, Diana Johnson facing full selection battles. Louise Elman is also facing a confidence vote. What do you make of all this? Is this really sending out the right message about Labour unity ahead of an election? I think it's obviously important that we, we always go through reselections. I'm going through mine now and um, we always go back to our party members and ask for their support again to stand at a forthcoming general election. And I think that accountability and that level of democracy in the party really matters. I think what is problematic about the process that we're currently going through, though, is that we've seen a number of MPs targeted um, and uh, plunged into a full open selection process with a general election just weeks away. And to the outside world, to the public, that just looks like Labour fighting with itself rather than providing a unified force that is capable of going out and talking to the country. And you can see that reflected in the opinion polls, I think. It's not the only reason that both Labour and the Tories are suffering in the opinion polls. I think our inability to compromise and to find a way through what has become a national crisis is part of the story. You know, when I was knocking on doors in Wigan six months ago, people were very, very angry with us, with all political parties, for not compromising. Now I just get a very strong sense that people have completely stopped listening. And to a certain extent, what we say now matters much less than what we do. We've got to compromise, we've got to work cross-party, and we've got to find a way to leave with a deal that protects people's jobs in towns like this. OK. Lisa Nandy, thank you very much for being on the programme today. Thank you.